Thank you so much, uh, Nevin Saiba and all friends. Yali uh, Madad and uh, with Molas uh, Mercy, uh, Molas uh, Rehmat uh, showers on all of us. Uh, so first of all, I would uh, also like to uh, take this uh, opportunity to uh, thank uh, uh, Nevin Saiba for sending uh, those uh, 40 wisdom of uh, gratitude, uh, which is uh, from Allama Sahib's book. And uh, it's very good to have and read uh, each wisdom each uh, and every day. And in addition to um, uh, Nehmet Saiba and Aziz Sahib for their great Ilmi service. Uh, so for uh, uh, this particular book, uh, 40 Wisdom of Gratitude, it, uh, as uh, Nehmet Saiba mentioned, that would be our humble, uh, humble gratitude and gift to uh, our beloved Mawlana Hazima on the occasion of uh, Mawlana's uh, birth, upcoming birthday. So, um that would be uh, it just you know reminded me that uh, you know we used to do like um, uh at the calf on the books of uh, uh Allah sahib or any other book or you would say at the calf on ginan uh, as you know that we do at the calf for 40 40 consecutive days and the purpose is for spiritual elevation and uh, removal of our worldly difficulties and and, and other uh, difficulties uh, so, uh, so similarly, uh, that would be a, a good idea that if we can personally uh, uh, do at the calf, ilmi at the calf, so that would be also a good th thing to do. So today we are going to uh, discuss uh, Surah Feel, and we will look at its uh, exoteric and esoteric aspect of Surah Feel. And uh, before we do uh, Surah Feel, I would like to uh, play uh, Morana Hazimam's uh, Mubarak uh, Farman, which is from uh, Nairobi, 1982. If you look at uh, Morana Hazimam's uh, Farameen uh, during the time of Silver Jubilee, because this Farman is from uh, Silver Jubilee, and this particular Farman Imam uh, emphasized about this idea of science and religion and how the science and religion is uh, uh, connected to, together and there is no dichotomy between science and religion. And so with that, uh, I would also encourage that if we all can make personal effort uh, to do our personal search in finding uh, other uh, Faramis uh, which are related to uh, science and religion from Moran Hazimam's uh, 1982 uh, Farameen. Uh, so let's uh, uh, listen to this uh, very important uh, uh, farman of our beloved Moran Hazimam. Please recite the salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. To your families, to your jamaats, I give my warmest, my most affectionate, and my best loving special blessings. Kanarata, Kanarata, Kanarata. My beloved spiritual children, 25 years have gone by and much has changed, but much is the same. And I want to underline to my spiritual children today one of the fundamental concepts of Islam which I want to express to you in a manner which I hope you will follow, you will grasp, and you will make yours. I began my firman by saying that in the past 25 years, much has changed, but much has remained the same. 
but has remained the same is our understanding of Islam. What has remained is the practice of our tariqah. What has remained is abiding by our traditions. And I want to underline the importance of this to you today on this occasion. Because there are parts of the world with people believing in other faiths who find it difficult to reconcile the interpretation of their faith and the modern world. We who believe in Islam are infinitely fortunate because Islam is a faith which is eternal. It is not a faith of the past. It is a faith of the past, but it's also a faith of the present, and it is a faith of the future. And when I say this, I want to underline to you the significance of the future in the sense that in other parts of the world, people find it difficult to reconcile their faith and modern science. People find it difficult to reconcile their faith and attitudes in society. But when we talk about science, if, as Islam tells us, and as we believe, Allah is eternal and he is everywhere, then all that science is doing is discovering small windows on Allah's creation. And it is a, should be a lesson in humility rather than a lesson in pride that one should understand that Islam is the meaning, is the sense, the totality of Allah's presence at all time. And we need not live in that conflict, in that concern, in that apprehension, that there is a dichotomy between the world and the life of every day and the practice of our faith. I say this today because 25 years have gone by and some of you have referred to me as the Imam of the Atomic Age. But I am the 49th Imam. And there will be Imams in the future. And the age will not be atomic, it may be the Space Age. And maybe it will be further than the Space Age. But all that means is that Allah's presence is everywhere, all the time. My beloved spiritual children, I think therefore that it is important that today, on this occasion, you should look to the future with confidence, loyalty, and total commitment to the fundamental concept of Islam, which is the eternity of Islam in the world of the past, the world of today, and the world of tomorrow. And that must never change. And that is something which I wish never to change. And that is why you have an Imam of the time to guide you, to direct you, so that the interpretation of that faith at that time is the faith of the time, but in its eternal context. It is an eternal context. My beloved spiritual children, Within that faith, nothing forbids science. Nothing forbids participating in the world of today. What Islam does is it guides the way in which you should live in the world of today. It guides as to what should be the relations between members of our faith. It guides in the use of the material well-being that one has. It does not forbid material well-being, but 
what it says, use it generously. Do not use it meanly. And use it with a conscience. And whatever strength you have, share that. So there is no conflict between Islam and the world of today and Islam and the world of tomorrow. And I wish to emphasize this simple message to my spiritual children tonight on this occasion so that you look to the future with comfort and with surety, with assurance, with hope and with understanding. This is the message which I have on this occasion. It is one of the fundamental messages of Islam. It is a message which holds for our children and for all our generations in the years ahead. Later during this visit, I will make a farman to my spiritual children about other matters. But this farman this evening is an important one because I want my spiritual children to be totally confident living in today's world and preparing themselves for tomorrow's world. I give to each and every one of you my warmest, my mm. most love, and my special blessings. Kanava, Kanava, Kanava. Please say salaam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. So anybody would like to share any thoughts on this format? Some key points, if anybody would like to share. Or oh, one or two points. Yeah, anybody would like to share? Okay, uh, so um, as we heard this very important Farman, and uh, for me, there are uh, many points. And the one in which um, Hazimam said about this uh, eter eternity of, uh, of Imamat, as, um, as, you, as you heard that, you know, Imam said, that the how the time time will go and the science will advance more and more uh, but in in the future the existence of allah and the existence of imam will be will be there so it's a principle which we uh, we learn from imams farman that you know the imamat is the eternal and permanent reality and so that's um, one a very key key important point and there are many uh, other points. Uh, so I'm sure that we all will reflect on um, on these points and particularly on this very important Farman. So let's come to um, uh, Surah Feel, uh, which is a very um, um, interesting surah. And uh, of course, many other surahs, uh, all the surahs are interesting uh, to read. But uh, this the way uh, when we look at this particular one, you know, there is a story of um, uh, Abraha that uh, how Abraha tried to destroy the house of Allah. So in uh, in its exoteric aspect, when we look at it's the Zahiri, uh, Zahiri aspect of this particular um, uh, the surah, in, in, in this reference, um, uh, the feel means elephant. Uh, so what happened is uh, with the historical background, uh, the people of the state of Yemen uh, used to go to Mecca every year for trade and uh, for, for the purpose of offering prayers in, in Khan Kaaba. And um, uh, Abraha, who was at that time, he was the governor of uh, Yemen and he was uh, appointed by Shah Habsh uh, Najashi. And um, when he saw that, that people are going to uh, Mecca uh, for pilgrimage and they are offering prayers over there in Mecca. So uh, what um, he decided that he wanted uh, to people uh, to not to go to Khan Kaaba, 
uh, but to come to the place which he created, he established, which he named it uh, Qalis. And uh, this is, I'm just sharing with you this um, essay I wrote um, a couple of years ago for, for RDC students. And I thought to uh, share with this group that would be uh, useful, hopefully. Uh, so he, uh, Abraha, uh, create, uh, established the beautiful house uh, of, of God. That, that's what he created. And he named in Sana, and he named it Kalis. Uh, because and he commanded people to come there for trade and to offer prayers instead of going to Khan Kaaba. And what happened that people did not pay attention uh, to his command, to Abraha's command, and people, uh, Muslims, continued to go to Khan Kaaba to offer prayers. And Abraha got quite angry with uh, people's response that uh, nobody is uh, following. Um, um, his uh, command and you know people are still going to Kanekaba uh, to offer prayers and not going to the place uh, which he um, established in Sana which he called Kalis. Uh, so uh, he uh, decided to destroy the house of Allah Kanekaba. So how he destroyed the house of Allah uh, that's what um, is in the historical background we find uh, in the Quran. And therefore, this uh, surah is known as a surah of feel. And feel means elephant. As interestingly, uh, I was reading the article by Dr. Uh, Fakir Muhammad uh, Zahi Sahib in, and he has wrote this article in Urdu, uh, which is about surah feel. And um, uh, in this particular uh, background, the historical background, what we find, is that this event occurred 40 to 50 days before the birth of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 40 to 50 days before. And uh, when Abraha uh, reached to, um, uh, to Mecca, uh, he captured uh, 200 camels of Hazrat Abdul Muttalib, who was the great grandfather of Prophet Muhammad. And uh, Hazrat uh, Abdul Muttalib was also a guardian of Khan Kaaba. So when Hazrat Abdul Muttalib uh, heard about it that uh, Abraha is uh, going to destroy the house of Allah Khan Kaaba, uh, Hazrat uh, Abdul Muttalib uh, uh, approached Abraha and he came to Abraha and he asked Abraha that uh, you have captured my 200 camels. So you just released 200 of my camels uh, from your uh, possession. And uh, Abraha said that, you know, um, I'm here to destroy the house of Allah, and you seem to be more worried about your camels, your 200 camels. So at that moment, Hazrat Abdul Muttalib, uh, Islam, Hazrat Abdul Muttalib said that I am the master of 200 camels, and the master of this place, this house of Allah, the God will take care of his place by himself. That I don't. I uh, need to worry about Khan Kaaba because Allah will take care of his uh, house. That's what um, Hazrat Abdul Muttalib uh, said. And so according to this article, uh, which uh, Dr. Faki Sahib has uh, written, uh, Dr. Faki Sahib said that uh, this, is the, uh, this is a great miracle of Hazrat Abdul Muttalib. So how this is a great miracle uh, that we will you know, know uh, as we will go further uh, in this uh, discussion. So what happened that um, Hazrat Abdul Muttalib knew and then Ismaili hierarchy, uh, we also know that Hazrat Abdul Muttalib was also the uh, Imam. And uh, Hazrat Abdul Muttalib um, um, sent his uh, son on the mountain of Qobis uh, to see uh, from this mountain what is going on. And uh, Hazrat Abdul Muttalib also uh, instructed uh, other uh, followers of his to, you know, to stay, uh, to um, stay um, outside of Khan Kaaba and go away from Makkah, uh, so they won't be affected by by this. Uh, so when his son, Hazrat Abdul Muttalib's son, uh, went on the mountain of Qobis, uh, he saw um, that um, uh, the black uh, clouds are coming. And uh, he informs Abdul Muttalib 
that black uh, clouds are approaching from the ocean. And at that moment, Hazrat Abdul Muttalib was very pleased. And Hazrat Abdul Muttalib said, Oh, community of Quraysh, get into your homes because God, Allah, is coming towards you. Allah's uh, help is coming uh, towards you. So that's what Hazrat uh, Abdul Muttalib said. And um, so how Allah pr pr protected his house, and as you can you know, read in this um, article, that um, uh, thousands of uh, Ababil um, uh, came uh, from, uh, fr from the ocean and uh, scattered uh, across, the, across the sky. And all the Ababil, all the birds had their uh, tiny uh, stones uh, in their uh, peaks. And as they threw the stones on Abraha's army and all other so, uh, his uh, people uh, and all the elephants, uh, because you know they all were carrying elephants and they were sitting on the elephants. And uh, that's how they decided to destroy the house of Allah. But um, uh, as the birds threw um, stones from their peaks, uh, all the elephants died. And as you know, for when we throw something from the highest velocity, uh, it uh, makes a very uh, negative impact, as we know, according to the science and according to the physics. So that's how all the elephants and the people of Abraha died. But uh, what happened is uh, Abraha uh, got uh, injured and uh, he uh, managed to run away. And uh, he approached to uh, approach over there to Yemen. And uh, over there, um, the Shah of Yemen, this uh, Najashi, he was uh, explaining everything, this uh, incident, what happened and how this happened. And uh, interestingly, at that time, uh, according to this uh, Dr. Sai's article, uh, at that time, one bird was following uh, Abraha. And as soon as Abraha finished uh, reporting to Najashi, uh, that bird threw the stone on Abraha's head and the Abraha died. Uh, so this is what uh, it's, it's a historical background of, of this uh, story. And now we can you know, look at uh, its, uh, its trans, uh, translation here. So this is uh, what we find in Surah Fil. And Surah Fil is from Surah number uh, uh, 105, uh, uh, according to the Quran, but according to the uh, revelation. Uh, the revelation, its number is 19. And because you know that in the Quran, it's not, uh, it's, it's not in the chronological order. Uh, we find those uh, surahs or chapters which are longest, they are in the beginning, and those which are smaller are towards the end of the Quran. So in this uh, uh, chapter, Allah says, um, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, has thought no seen how the Lord dealt with the owners of the elephant. Did he not bring their stratagem to naught and send against them swarms of flying creatures, which pelted them with stones of baked uh, clay and make them like green crops devoured by cattle? So, uh, so this is the translation and you know what we uh, heard, uh, its hysterical background. Uh, I hope that would be... Uh, now clear. Uh, so we can ask this question here that, you know, why Allah is saying that uh, to the Prophet Muhammad that have you not seen that uh, how Allah dealt with the um, elephant and dealt with this uh, people of uh, Abraha? Because the Prophet was not born. Prophet was born after 40 to 50 days of this event, of this incident. So we can look at it, it's, it's an inner meaning. And uh, as we know that uh, for the prophets and the imam, in their spirituality, they can also see uh, present, past, and future. Everything for them, it's in, in the present. So with that reference, uh, uh, Allah is asking that question that have you not seen uh, that how Allah dealt with the elephant? And so here, uh, if we try to understand it's uh, uh, inner meaning or the deeper meaning, and now we need to make the connection. We need to connect this uh, example or the story of Abraha or the uh, Quranic chapter to our own personal world, to our own inner world. So we look at uh, some of the uh, symbols here. So Abraha is, uh, is the 
is a symbol of a person Satan, and um, um, elephant uh, is a symbol of bad thoughts, and a bird uh, would be a symbol of a moment's soul, and stone would be the symbol for knowledge. So just um, uh, remember that, and there would be many aspects, and there would be many other meanings and many layers of meanings, as we know that you know in the Quran we find uh, many. Uh, in, moment, can you repeat that again about the many, symbols? Many aspects. Yeah, sure. So here, um, uh, Abraha is a symbol of personal Satan, and as as I said, that that could be uh, just one symbol, and there will be you know many many other other examples. But uh, how I connected is that Abraha is a symbol of personal Satan, and then elephant is the symbol of vaswasa or bad thoughts and uh, bird is the symbol of a moment's soul and stone is the symbol for knowledge and uh, uh, with with that um, how we can you know make a connection like you know within our own personal world as uh, prophet muhammad said that kalbul moment betullah that moment's heart is the is the place of allah or the house of allah so within our heart, we have this Baitullah. So we have to save that. Right? We have to save, save that from uh, of our personal Satan because we also have this negative force. And then we also have this uh, angelic power within us. So how we can actualize that angelic power within us? And then, you know, every bad thought is an example of uh, example of an elephant right because you know when we are keep thinking a negative then that negative when we don't stop that negative thought it just keep increasing and increasing and you know we are just uh, for um, for 15 minutes or 20 minutes we are uh, we are just into that negativity or into that negative thought so it's, so that's how it symbolizes uh, to the symbol of uh, elephant and then when, when we throw the stone of knowledge, right, that, you know, uh, through knowledge, and we can also say that, you know, through zikr or through remembrance, we can kill that thought, we can kill that negativity. And therefore, uh, Imam Jafar Sadiq uh, Ali Salam, uh, said that every heart has two ears. In one is appointed an angel who guides, and in the other, a mischievous devil. The former commands to do good and later prevents. The devil commands to commit sin and angel prevents. And this is mentioned in words, uh, verse uh, 50, 17, and 18. Uh, so this is what I uh, took from uh, one of the Lama Sahib's books. So this is what this idea is that we have two friends. One is our personal Satan and one is our personal angel. So when we listen to our personal angel, uh, so at that time we are saving that you know house of Allah which is within each one of us. So each one of us we are very unique because we are Imam spiritual children, and we are as you know spiritually Imam you know spiritually if in a spiritual sense you know we are prince and princess because of the spiritual connection uh, with the uh, Imam of the time. And so. The another uh, idea which we can, you know, get from uh, this uh, particular uh, surah, surah peel, uh, is that um, uh, to always engage ourselves in the remembrance uh, of Ali Allah, in the remembrance of uh, Mola, as uh, this um, uh, Quranic verse says that Allah basically light that mainul qulub that do hearts get satisfaction from the remembrance of Allah. And this is uh, this is how we can you know uh, uh, defeat uh, our, our personal uh, Satan because you know every single day we have this uh, argument and we have this fight uh, within our own self, right? And therefore, uh, uh, Mohan Imam also mentioned in his speech, "Word of God, Art of Man," uh, that uh, the true jihad is to fight against ignorance, so ignorance uh, within oneself. That you know we fight for that. And uh, through remembrance and through zikr and through Giriya Uzari, all that help us to always stay in um, in positive thoughts. And therefore, uh, um, this is a farman of our beloved Nurmara uh, Shakim Sinha's Imam from uh, uh, 1960s, in which uh, Mala said that your whole day would pass in enlightenment if you wake up early uh, with my name and offer prayers. That we 
our entire day will pass in enlightenment, spiritual enlightenment, if we remember Mola, and we offer our prayers. So Imam is, you know, giving us this guarantee that uh, if, we rem if we wake up early and we offer gratitude and we offer our prayers, uh, that will be the source of uh, spiritual uh, enlightenment uh, for us. And uh, uh, in this reference, I'm sure we uh, know this uh, uh, very beautiful prayer of Prophet Muhammad in which Prophet said that, O oh Lord, increase me in knowledge. And uh, as we know that, you know, the knowledge and uh, uh, ibadat, they both are equally important. And uh, in that reference, Imam Sultan Shah Salam said, uh, the spirit enriched in knowledge will rise higher step by step, but one who lacks the inner knowledge will complacently stay where he is. Such a person remain imperious to my parman. And uh, this is a very important uh, hadith in reference to the baraka and the blessings uh, when we are um, acquiring knowledge and when we are seeking knowledge and when we are in the remembrance of uh, present and the living Imam, Omar and Hazri Imam, alayhi salam, uh, because this is an idea, right? And we all know that when we engage in zikr, we invite good spirits, uh, not only um, when we are in Jamaat Khana. When we are in Jamaat Khana, it's, indeed, it's very beneficial, and we get a higher benefit of that because we are in the remembrance of Mola. And uh, as we said in the Ginan, the Sarak Bhavanti Hurai, Nurna Piala Laive, that you know, the spirits are coming uh, in Jamaat Khana when we are in the remembrance of Mola. But in addition to that, uh, we can also um, experience uh, that. Uh, uh, it could be maybe lower. Um, at our place, but higher in Jamaat Khana, but still we can benefit that, you know, we can experience uh, uh, that, um, that good spirits are coming to our place, coming to our home, because we are in the remembrance of Mola. And this is what uh, I am uh, sharing in reference to the book Sarair. And uh, in one of the lectures of Dr. Fakim Muhammad Said, he mentioned that it's written in Sarair that there are tourist angels in this world tourist angels in this world. What these tourist angels are doing, these tourist angels um, um, go over there where people are in the remembrance of Mola. So when in our uh, gathering, if we are remembering Mola, then this is what our belief is according to the um, our Dai, um, Jafar bin Mansuri al-Yaman, that he said that there are tourist angels in the world when you are doing uh, engaging in Mola's remembrance and acquiring Mola's true knowledge, then those good spirits come to your place, come to your home. And, uh, and sometimes we feel that reflection. You know? So that would be uh, uh, higher for those, uh, particularly those murids of the Imam, because they are at the level of Hakikat. So the, this is um, uh, another point. And uh, the lastly, uh, I would like to mention the word here is uh, the word sijil. You know, there is a word here, uh, sijil in Alantara Kaif Paala Rabuka. And um, uh, so sijil has, uh, sijil means stone. And uh, stone is consist of, it consists of uh, uh, water and clay. Uh, so here the water is the symbol of uh, uh, knowledge. And clay is the symbol of uh, the faith and the etiquette of a mu'min. So that's uh, that's how uh, we can connect this idea of stone. So that would be another another meaning of it. So this word sigil has many aspects. Um, so I'm just sharing with you this one aspect. But in this uh, article by Dr. Fakis, I um, he has uh, mentioned and written um, many other uh, some of other aspects of sigil. Uh, into this uh, particular one. So lastly, what I would like to do is uh, I would like to uh, play this uh, Surah feel. So you would just uh, have this uh, idea of uh, um, knowing it's um, uh, Arabic a little bit, uh, just to have a feel of it and so look at its uh, translation. So let me share uh, 
So this is a sort of field and uh, uh, let me just allow that uh, audio option. What is this thing right here? Oh, I love it. So here it uh, completes uh, uh, this particular uh, sura, and um, uh, Memola help uh, all of us to do our own personal search to uh, to further. Uh, understand uh, this particular uh, uh, surah, and um, you know I often uh, share with uh, with the students, you know how we can uh, make a personal connection uh, to to surah feel uh, in in you know in that sense that um, as uh, we find in this uh, surah uh, in a verse from the Quran that one who is devoid of Allah's remembrance, Allah appoint a, a, a Satan for that person who becomes his companion. Uh, so in the other hand, when we engage ourselves in remembrance, then uh, we uh, make companionship with an angel. Uh, so let's um, uh, continue our personal search and our zikr, ibadat bandagi, and acquiring hakikati knowledge uh, from the books of our peace and da'is and the imam, uh, so we can uh, actualize our angelic uh, power. Thank you so much uh, for uh, everyone's attention and uh, I can try to answer any questions. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah, Shukranillah, Alhamdulillah. Uh, friends, if you have any questions, you can go to post it in the chat or you can unmute. It was amazing to hear how you related the Surah feel the symbols with the um, the story so it was a uh, very um, good understanding and um, good logic behind it yes yes shukrama shukrama mm -hmm. yeah it's very interesting that you know this particular uh, um how we find its exoteric aspect and then exoteric aspect helps you to go into its uh, inner meaning. Okay. Friends, if you have even if a comment, you can come forward and talk about it. <clears throat> uh, so I hope that um, um uh, have any of you have heard it before or any point you think that would be new for you or you know if you have questions please um we have one question how do we conquer um satan in our ibadat uh in our ibadat so uh, definitely like uh, engaging in zikr during the daytime you mean like uh, uh doing your bandagi time or when you are doing zikr uh, so that's what I think you are referring. So uh, one good thing would be, you know, before we start our ibadat or bandagi or from 4 to uh, 5 a.m. Or, or going to Jamaat Khana, we can maybe do short Giriya Huzari or short prayers or sometimes verbal prayer will also help that, you know, you do verbal prayers or zikr of any tasbih, you know, you recite tasbih. Uh, for example, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi lalazim or any other tasbih. Uh, because la hawla wa la quwwata is uh, particularly for um, um, uh, focus. It's also good tasbih for to, you know, uh, focus in ibadat. And uh, it's considered, it's a pro according to Prophet Muhammad, Prophet said that this is a treatment for 99 spiritual diseases. So like uh, waswasa is kind of illness. And we want to cure that through remembrance and through zikr. So Giryozari would be one thing, and uh, also zikr during the daytime would, will also help. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Um, another question is, 
It was new to hear that stone is knowledge and not Ismayazam. Are you saying that we can kill our Satan through knowledge? Uh, yes, so uh, here uh, that, you know, the as I said, that we one symbol, right? The, 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 knowledge, the stone is the symbol of knowledge. But, you know, in at the other level uh, for uh, there are, there is a negative aspect to it also, like negative aspect in that sense that, you know, the meaning of shaitan, shaitani rajim. What is the meaning of rajim? Rajim means that the uh, the one jo sang bari karta hai, jo patthar barsata hai, the one who throws uh, the stones, right? So how the person Satan is, you know, doing, um, throwing stones on us is through negative thoughts, through negative, you know, negative ideas, through doubts. So here, as we can, as we in that perspective, perspective of Satan, our stone symbolize as uh, negative thoughts or negative knowledge or or incorrect knowledge. So that would be, uh, you know, one one element. And as we do more uh, more research, you know, it as I said that it's it's not uh, final that you know just stone is only the symbol of knowledge. It, as I said, that it is a symbol of knowledge with, with one aspect, and uh, it could be many other aspects. But uh, uh, right now, I'm familiar with that one, so that's I, I feel comfortable to share. Therefore, I I shared that idea. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Um, there is a another question. What type of angel was the tourist angel? Was he in sea or some other ones oh, yeah so these tourist angels are like subtle uh, in subtle body in jismi latif uh, so that's uh, that's what we we know and um, like you know in the ginan which have we have this idea of uh, angels oh. subhanallah um and then there's another question in some of the sessions, ibadat is emphasized so much that knowledge sounds secondary. Where would you place this? Uh, they both are equally important. Uh, they, like you know, for example, just you know, generally speaking, for a uh, for a student uh, who is doing a degree, uh, the student uh, for student practical. And also, you know, studying, they both are equally important for a physician or those who are uh, in the medical field on this call uh, today, that they know that practice and the knowledge, they both are equally important. So similarly, for spiritual progress, um, they both are equally important. We cannot, you know, ignore one or the another. It's the example of um, like, you know, the boat that, you know, for to, um, or boat or the example of a bird, that a bird can fly with two wings, a uh, wing of knowledge and a uh, wing of ibadat. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. Can you please elaborate on the last hadith about seeking forgiveness for the fish in the water? Okay, so that uh, hadith is, you know, very, uh, very important, and it's, you know, interesting. So in this particular, in that particular uh, hadith, actually, it's about, you know, all the barakah and the blessings, like uh, uh, fishes in the ocean. Uh, they are praying for uh, one who is acquiring knowledge. Uh, so that is at, at at one level. But as we know that, you know, according to the Ismaili literature and advanced uh, Ismaili teaching. Uh, fish is a symbol of nafsekul, universal soul. So we can also uh, think about, you know, in that level also that uh, when we are acquiring hakikati knowledge, uh, spiritual knowledge, uh, sacred uh, personalities are with us. Uh, the nur of Imam is uh, with us. Imam's guidance is with us. Imam's blessing is with us. So we can take it into into that sense. Subhanallah. Okay. Subhanallah. Um, there's another question. Why Maulana Sultan Muhammad Shah had such strong firmans for Betul Khayal? Why not about knowledge is emphasized? Why not knowledge is emphasized? We feel so behind not knowing this knowledge. 
uh, like uh, speaking about uh, importance of uh, Akikati knowledge in Imams Farman. That's she was. That's so. I think friend is asking the the way Sultan Mamisha has several Farmans about Betul Khayal. Yes, strict yes. Farmans about Betul Khayal. So why not about more emphasis about gaining the knowledge? So yeah. friend is saying that we feel so behind on this knowledge which we are listening to now, a days. Um, so why was not emphasized before at that time? And just yes, Betul sure. Khayal was emphasized. Uh, yes, yeah, sure, definitely. For uh, this particular uh, question, uh, we do have to also uh, read uh, Maulana, Hazib, Maulana Sultan Muhammad Shah Ali Salam's uh, Farami. And actually, Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah also uh, the, gave great emphasis in acquiring knowledge also, as you know, as uh, the Farman which I uh, quoted, uh, he, which I have here, right? In which uh, Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah said that, uh, that uh, 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 that soul, uh, the spirit enriched in knowledge will rise higher step by step. The one who has this knowledge, that soul will rise higher and higher. And um, uh, so that would be, uh, I would say that we need to correct our understanding uh, in that reference that Imam Sutamasha also gave importance to knowledge also. And with that, um, I'm sure uh, if you uh, remember from other speakers uh, from this platform and from other platforms, uh, uh, this the speak Sultan Muhammad Shah Islam's uh, 1945 mission conference. And that mission conference, uh, Imam uh, mentioned that you know the, uh, those uh, were religious people, Bhagat in the Jamaat. They their knowledge is not uh, 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 higher than the Ivano's knowledge, because Ivano has done um, translation of our Ismaili literature and the many, uh, some of the books of our uh, Dais and Peas, right? So we uh, have to look into that. And then also, we, if when we study uh, Maulana Sultan Muhammad Shah Ali Islam, Ruhani Ras Farameen, in the Ruhani Ras Farameen, we also find many uh, Farameens which are related to uh, knowledge also, and particularly the usul e Farman. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, and I think uh, in Sultan Mamusha's Farman, it is mentioned that Imam says that if you are uh, a Kalman, you will follow the path of Hakikat. If you're intellectual, you will follow the path of Hakikat. So, Subhan. which is gained by true knowledge. So, shukar alhamdulillah. Friends, if you have any more questions, um, you can either post it in the chat or you can come forward or unmute your devices. If no friends, no uh, questions right now, uh, you know, if you uh, have questions later on, you can always share. Um, and, uh, you know, on our next session, we yes, can always um, get those questions answered as well. And um, yes, friends, a couple of the friends have requested if you can record the zikr in your voice. So do do record those whenever you get a chance. And uh, Sure. Let us all come forward and say um, thank you to our uh, guest speaker today, Ria Saib. Thank you so much for coming thank on our platform and taking your time and sharing the knowledge with us. Uh, we all thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you, you're welcome, Mola. Yali Madad, Yali Madad. Mola. Yali Madad, thank you. Yali Madad. Mola Ali Madad, thank you. Thank you so much, Dad. You're welcome, Shukran. Mola bless you. Amin, Amin. Yali Madad, Yali Madad. Mola Ali Madad.